Okay. We're going to start streaming here. See what's going on. Everybody hears me? Okay. going uh, hopefully we can we're doing a couple different things today so hopefully things are going to work let's see see if people start populating to the channel I'll give it a few moments Yay, Monster Vision. <laughs> Let's give it a few moments. I'm going to... Uh... Welcome to number 10 episode. Sorry guys, we had a few different things happening um, and I'm waiting to see if uh, Facebook kind of jumps in, kind of seeming to have a little bit of problem. Uh, and I also am going to be testing the restream chat so we should actually be seeing some of the stream. How's it going Anthony? How's it going Infinite? Yeah, this is kind of weird because I think I see a Facebook up on my uh, OBS, but I'm not seeing it. So let me go ahead and... Okay, Facebook is still connecting. So those in Facebook at the moment, I'm not going to be able to read quite yet. Um, so we're going to give it a second. Hopefully those will come in. Otherwise, I might have to drop out and um, come back in. So welcome to episode 10, guys. It's kind of rainy, kind of nasty, kind of in a you know, black mood kind of stuff. So we're going to kind of see what we come up with today. And Facebook kind of caused some issues with some of our um, group stuff. So we're trying to um, get that all settled. Let me go ahead and restart my restream chat and see if that kind of worked. see if that can bring in those on Facebook because otherwise I'm not going to be able to see what's going on or those in Facebook ask me a question I'm not going to be able to answer so I'd apologize um, so let me see Kind of weird. Yeah, Facebook is not connecting. Yay. Let's see. I might have to do a couple different chat sections. See what you guys are saying in Facebook and jump around if it works. So. Yeah, because Kevin, I wasn't seeing you. Um, I wasn't seeing you make a comment, so I apologize for that one. So, how's it going, Kevin? So, this is going to be kind of interesting. Me jumping around um, in a couple different chats to actually see. Um, so, my name is Brett Briley. Um, you can find my work at uh, bbriley.com. There, as you can see, this is kind of scaling. It's going to show some of the different kits. I've been in the freelance character artist for about five years, but in game industry, about 20. So, this is going to be episode 10. Some of you guys have 
been here and enjoying before. If you're not uh, someone that's jumped in before, please drop me, you know, ask any kind of questions. It's an open platform. Um, and you can also find my work at uh, artstation.com forward slash spark, um, which, you know, pretty much echoes some of what you saw on my website. And then I also have the Instagram at um, www.instagram.com forward slash art. I'm also part of a group um, called Grimm with James Kane and Martin Verhoeven, some very talented artists. We came together to be called Grimm. Together we are Grimm. And that's where we're going to just showcase some of our artwork, um, our kits that you can purchase within the shop. And you can find some of the different art, uh, artwork just over the different years of all our different stuff. About page just kind of lets us know. Uh, we pretty much met at the ZBrush Summit and got together. We've always kind of been a fan of each other's work um, and decided to group together. You can also find us at uh, Instagram.com at WeAreGrim, forward slash WeAreGrim. We're just slowly building this, so any kind of love will be greatly appreciated. Um, okay, I'm not seeing any kind of comments whatsoever from people, so this is getting kind of frustrating. So this is going to be kind of uh, great. OK, let me go ahead and restart the Restream chat again. This might be a very interesting time if I cannot read what's going on. And I think I know what it might be. Hold on a second, guys. Let me take out that chat and see. Because it says it's connecting, but I can't read anybody's statement. Okay, Craig. All right, I see. I see Craig Kelly. If you guys just don't mind typing, just let me know that I'm, I'm live and, and showcasing. Facebook isn't coming through for some reason, so I apologize. I'm going to try to keep two things going at once. I see Craig Kelly finally coming in. Uh, like I said, we've been kind of um, having some issues um, getting things started. Oscar tested it out last night at ZBrush Live, so we figured we'd have some bumps. How's it going, Karen? Appreciate you joining. So now I'm just jumping around in a couple different things. So, okay, let's uh, get started. Um, trying to situate these things so I can actually see everybody. All right, typing. <laughs> Good, thank you. I'm a Maddie, and uh, excuse my dogs in advance. Um, I'm just gonna have trash pick up here pretty soon, so they might kind of just join in on the fun. So. What I've been doing for these episodes to kind of help everybody kind of get into ZBrush uh, for the novice and for those who have been doing this quite a while, I've been using some scanned heads to kind of get a good start so people don't have to rely on just starting from a sphere and trying to figure out all the anatomy, but using scanned data to kind of help us create, looking for forms, looking for ideas, um, and kind of taking off some of the pressure because art should be not pressure, you know, it should be actually fun. So I want everybody to kind of have some fun do what you got to do to to kind of create so on this character um, I just basically have an old lady that uh, I found from the scan data through 1024 um, and uh, I have broken it down into uh, different levels to where I just can now go up and down on my levels uh, so I can quickly move up in detail so if I want to you know make movements on the character if I want to kind of tweak something I can move very quickly here rather than being on the highest level where a lot of people seem to work and 
it takes a lot longer for me to make any kind of movements and changes. I had split the face down, divided it from the left to the right, and then I pretty much flipped for symmetrical. So um, that's why you're going to notice like, excuse me, like a little different. So this is the left hand side of the face. Came together, was a little bit pinched, and then I had the larger one on that side as well. Um, okay, you guys still here? Can, can you? Anybody just kind of type? It just feels like I'm I'm alone. So I got crap. Okay, so Karen, typey. Thank you. Okay, good. It gets quiet. It's like we're just starting, which is good, but um, live. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. I'm doing with. Um, I'm dealing with a couple different windows here, and it's kind of frustrating. So, hey, how's it going, Paul? So, uh, so yeah, then I decided to, because uh, some people were asking, usually with the scan data for the, the previous episodes, I haven't really been messing with them out. Um, how's it going, Blink? I decided to then kind of quickly divide it up. So as you can see, I still have my levels, but I actually broke them up into different subtools, into subgroups and separated them and then I created let me bring that back so then I separated those and then I just redynameshed and then I did the levels so now I have the head without the jaw and then I have the jaw itself that I can use put together then we have the full head um, if that works so this way, I can actually kind of like move the jaw down, I can manipulate it, or I can dig up inside. So if this is pretty much how I would make a mouth, um, pretty much a mouth bag, but I'm just quickly showing you can do that as well. If you want to take off the ears on this one, you just grab the ears, make a different tool, rip it off, and then fill it in, and then you can break down the subtools however you want. So <laughs> your speech is one. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, what process, Kevin's asking, um, I'm not too sure, Kevin, what 1024 actually uses. I'm pretty sure it's like phot uh, photogrammetry. Um, that's a hard word, uh, where they just take pictures all around. Um, may I ask you, say it's hard to design for a 3D printer for tools like a nail? Um, you're no, thanks, Greg. When you're actually doing something for 3D, you just want to make sure that whatever you're going to print, you don't have any holes. So if I actually have a hole, the print can print it. But if you're going to make any kind of cast, you can't have the silicone fill into that hole. So um, how's it going, Adib? Good to see you, man. So on this one, appreciate you joining. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I have my local symmetry on. I'm just going to go down to my move tool. I'm going to start playing with the face on this one. Um, I, think, I think today I might kind of just... I was thinking like a little bit more towards snake. So I'm going to wipe out some of these different things on the ear. Most of the times I was saying like I'm going to be working with um, certain sections of the face. So you have four senses. You have the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the ears as the senses for humans. So whenever you're kind of creating a creature, a lot of times wiping out one of those senses, like if I want to go down and take out the nose, that is going to change the look of the character pretty drastically. Um, if I want to take out the ears, on this one I think I'm going to take out quite a bit. I'm going to take out the ears as well. I don't really want to kind of use them um, because a snake, of course, don't have ears. They actually just have, you know, well, and they have ears, but tiny little holes. So, is the is the stream working for you guys? Hopefully not. Not giving you kind of problems. So, okay, good. So I'm going to just start kind of playing with the shape of the face and the eyes. I'm going to probably do more <clears throat> kind of like a cobra. So let's just kind of get some of the shape of the cobra. And I'm going to probably kind of think of, oops, I did not want any kind of color into it. Let's go ahead and just start kind of. Now with this mouth being separated, this is where I have to kind of I'm going to go, hold down my alt and I'm going to switch over. So then this way I can go down and manipulate this one. So let's say if I want to bring this mouth open because I want to sit there and put teeth in there. 
I now have that as a separate mount bag, so I can I can now pull this open and add teeth if I want later. So I'm going to, since it's going to be kind of a snake, I'm going to kind of flatten the nose out. Let's bring in this and we'll do it. Okay. And let's give it a little bit thicker back head just because snakes were, you know, by talking cobra, they have a very flat open face. And I'm going to probably bring in the eyes because snakes feel a little shifty. So, uh, right now, cats um, at division level two. So, you guys can watch down here some, if you could see most of it. It's going to kind of. Um, go up and down. Yeah, I guess I got it too low. Um, yeah, Division 2. And this is Division 1, 2, 3, 4, and I think I only got yeah 5 levels on it. So I usually try to, to get down. Um, I try to keep some of the levels kind of low in the beginning as I'm filling out the forms. This level 2 kind of gives me some idea of what I'm doing, so that's probably what I'm going to kind of keep to because I want to see some of the face. But at level one, I kind of lose too much of the details. This is where I kind of might want to use to pull a little bit faster. Um, and again, the mouth level is a little bit higher. So snake, um, as I was saying, I think is um, they're a little bit shifty. So I'm going to kind of probably shrink the eyes down using pinch. Okay. And I'm going to create quick eye bags where I can set in some eyes here in a second because that's going to make a difference of um, to my character. So with the snake, I took out the nose, I took out the ears. I'm not dealing with too much of that. I'm going to probably shrink in, and I'm using the move tool. I'm bringing in the mouth right now. You know, if it's not there, I can then use it to kind of come back in. Here. I'm going to probably make this kind of like a mean snake, so to do that I'm going to give it a little bit heavier brow. Okay, I'm probably treat the eyes and stuff. Let's go ahead and let's make a hood within a hood, I guess, just for a second. And it looks kind of kind of odd, kind of odd for it. Yeah, the uh, Kevin the mouth the mouth bag. Um, I mean, it's just usually when you're you're kind of a quick way to, to knock something in and for depending on the character or whatever. If I'm just doing a still statue, uh, especially for like I'm doing a 3D print or whatever, and I don't have that mouth open, I'd make it one solid piece. If I start going towards the games or movies where I have to have the actor or the the, the character kind of open up so it's going to scream, I at least have that capability to to do this. So this is just a quick way to, to separate it and build that open. Now that I have that open, I can always populate teeth in there. If I decide to have the creature closed mouth completely, I could just re-dyne a mesh, close that off, and then... Um, uh, and then do it from there. Uh, a deep, you can actually probably just find it on the 10, uh, 10 cent or the 1024. They have a website uh, for the scan data. The reason I want you guys to, I've seen a lot of students, they just grab scan data and they don't do anything with it. They just, they copy it and they'll just kind of, you know, take in flat and make the nose a little bit bigger and call it done. So I want everybody to kind of, if you're going to use any kind of, um, scan data just use it for the benefit of creating looking at some of the flow of the character um, like I see her necklines and this is kind of what I was looking trying to decide what did I want to do I saw very snake like features in her neck you know what I mean like they were almost scales building up um, so that's pretty much how I started it just taking a look at and trying to figure out so I'm just gonna wipe out some of her detail this would, this would be the back of the neck, and I can do some kind of scaling down the line. Again, we're just having fun. There's, I, you know, if I don't turn out a creature that I like, no worries. Uh, I'm not. It's it's more for exploration. A lot of times, I'll 
just start sculpting, go in a different direction uh, down the line because I might not like it, um, and uh, but still have that in my library that I can pull back from and go, you know, it didn't work for this time. Maybe it might work for another time. I could actually just go ahead and use it for a different character. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring in some eyes. So that's kind of large. Let's go ahead and just scale that down real quick. Yeah, pretty large. And this is how a lot of times I actually, I was just, you know, I grab a sphere and I'll just start either using that sphere to kind of create or this is just how I bring in eyeballs really quickly. Because I want to develop this eye over top. Okay, once I have that eye sectioned in there to the spot, I'm going to go to Subtool, uh, Z Plugin, Sub, uh, um, Subtool Master. Click on that. Then I'm just going to go to Mirror. And I'm just going to merge. And then that way these two are together. Now, you can do it while you're sculpting, but if you want a different color or whatever, you could just um, give it a material hit if you want. Right now, I'm not going to really worry about that. But I want those in there so I can actually start really paying attention. So, I'm going to kind of start working on going up one little level just for right now because I want to sit there and build those, these eyes in here. Trying to double check what everybody's saying. Kind of the, I got stuff over here and over there and over. There. <laughs> trying to uh, hopefully make it this kind of fixed because it makes it a little bit more difficult. All right, so I'm gonna kind of add a little bit of puffiness to the eyes, and I'm going to start building up this brow section because I want to sit there and kind of use this as you know, some build-up lines of detail and start turning because I want it to be kind of mean. So I'm going to build this brow section out a little bit more. And I want to kind of feed it back into the, the brow of the head. I might have to make this a little bit wider, these a little bit smaller. Um, I'm just going to have to play with it a little bit. Yeah, what's the question? Ancient, you're asking a question? Oh, I'm sorry. You asked a question above it. Um, just a small question. Hard surface modeling, can ZBrush replace Maya with ZModeler? I mean, each each program is, is you know, has its own specialty. Uh, to be quite honest, I love ZBrush. Um, I think it does a lot. And um, I use Max for a lot of my hard surface, so it doesn't mean that I, I um, you know, I'm just going to throw it away. I'm used to it. Although ZModeler has a lot of cool functions and stuff. And you just whatever you feel comfortable with. ZBrush has added a lot of um, functionality that really makes it pretty neat to um, to allow you to kind of stay within a lot of those programs, uh, stay within ZBrush, so you don't have to jump back in and out because um, you used to have to really jump back in and out and then again um, until you kind of added that. So if you feel comfortable with it, use it. Um, ZBrush is the most potent, powerful, awesome program that I've ever used, to be quite honest. So I love it, and it's really deep. Um, so, I, but I have a tendency that I'm only I only use it for whatever I need it for. I mean, I kind of um, I'm not going to sit there and kind of you know switch around the program. Uh, mortar, is there any size for the sphere? Um, can you guys still see the chat? Like everybody's asking questions, or do I have to repeat it in OBS? I, I can't remember if I turned that off or not. No, I guess you guys can see what people are saying in the chat actually more than I can. Um, no, I mean, the uh, there's no general size for any of this stuff. I mean, it's just whatever to me, I'm just, I'm looking at what's what looks normal to me. I mean, what, what do I like? Um, 
you know that's that's all I'm doing right now so you can make this however you want the eye on a different size there is no set like I, it has to be exactly you know, a certain amount of inches tall or whatever okay so let's start building up this neckline because again I kind of want to start getting it more towards that snake and building up the strength now I'm, I'm I'm like level four right now. I'm going to go down to level three because I'm trying to wipe out details and I want to sit there and not worry about spending how much of time I'm just wiping things away. Now I'm kind of making like a cavity for the hood. Um, just for the moment, I'm just kind of seeing if I like that. So I'm just kind of playing and I'm trying to emphasize a little. Maybe there's some flesh piece or it kind of rails around. Um, so I'm thinking Cobra, but I'm also kind of playing around to kind of sweep back to the chin. I like this underneath hand chin, so I might kind of separate um, and bring this chin a little bit sharper and underneath. So again, I'm just trying certain shapes. When I did that, I want to make this jaw a little bit in. And I like this stretched skin coming from here. Okay. So I'm just kind of just playing around with shapes right now. I'm pretty at a low level. I might have to kind of deal with it. Um, oh, I gotcha. See, that's what I was wondering, Mortar. Like, it's on super small on the screen because I can't read it. That's what I was trying to do. I cannot see it. So. Um, what I might have to do is just figure out how to make that bigger. Um, so, let's see. Hey, Rommel. How's it going, man? Rommel's a um, phenomenal character artist. You guys should check out his work. Rommel Chopra. He just uh, posted up some stuff. See, that's on Facebook. I'm not even seeing some of the stuff. Um, no, this, Kevin, this is just for fun. I, all I'm doing is just, I'm just kind of playing around. Um, I'm trying to give you guys just some ideas, because uh, a lot of students, a lot of people just kind of worry about creating. And as an artist, hell yeah, I'm just, I just try to, you know, have fun. Uh, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. So, um, it's just... You know, I, I don't know. I, my my father's a CPA, and I didn't want to become a CPA because I didn't sound fun. So I was like, I like art, so I just want to have fun. Um, and uh, so that's where I try to teach to a lot of, you know, a lot of people coming in, um, just to not worry about being the best or, you know, you have to create something extraordinary every single time. I've created a lot of crap in my lifetime. <laughs> so, a lot of bad things that I kind of go ah. But as long as I, you know, as long as you learn from it, I think that's the most important part. Like, you know, what works, what doesn't. So I'm just building up these brow lines. I'm going to kind of sit there and try to sweep up. So I'm just going to create some, like, the separation. Um, you know, and I might even kind of maybe treat this as, like, the start of a buildup of some scales or, you know, information or extra lines to... And I'm, I'm using the damn standard, and I'm just holding down my alt keys, and I'm kind of, so I get uh, the Z addition instead of the Z abstraction. Anytime you hold down the alt, it changes the button on the Z add and the Z sub. So if it starts out as a dig, which is the Z subtraction, if you hold down alt, it'll just flip it around, and that's most for, for most brushes and stuff. So, okay. Now, if I'm going to sit there and bring in teeth, either I'm going to sit there and decide that this guy is going to be more of where the lower lip, and this is what the great thing about separating is like I now can kind of, you know, decide do I want teeth, do I want to sit there and do anything like that, I can quickly grab, or I want this guy to be a little bit more um, using the in-flat brush to kind of play with some of the shapes of the chin line. save so that's the great thing about separating or if I just want to 
you know, open that up to where I now can quickly decide. That's the great thing about creating like a little moth bag and separating these two elements and stuff. So at the moment, I'm gonna keep it right there. I'm gonna fix some of the facial feature that I'm not quite liking the connection. Um, I probably want to bury this in. Let's widen, it's a little too human. So I'm gonna kind of change this direction. Widen it like a snake a little bit more. And let's build up some of on these lines. So <laughs> we're almost a normal artist. I don't think so. Look them up, guys. If uh, if I point you towards any kind of artist I drop in or whatever, it's just the great thing about knowing other artists is you can get a wide diversity for your library. So when you're starting out, you want to just sit there and collect art, see art, you know, to do art. Um, this is part of like, you know, I, I can draw a cat without reference. It's going to be one ugly cat. You know what I mean? Um, so if somebody says, I want to, I want you to draw an ugly cat, I don't look at reference. I want to draw something pretty that I have to look at reference. So, but you want to, you want to start building up your library, start building up a lot of your collection and definitely start building up your eye and looking at other work, uh, especially from solid artists. Um, so, and Rama owes me five bucks for that, so, but it's true. <laughs> so I'm just playing around. I'm trying to decide, I'm trying to build up some levels. Um, like stair steps. It's almost like in cloth. I'm kind of creating this line down and moving through the forms um, just to sit there and in place. So that's what I'm trying to decide now uh, because I got this part of that jaw, these connections. So I'm kind of trying to echo some of those shapes that I started to create into the form. Um, let me see. Once you guys start to get something that you like into your forms, uh, or you find something that's successful, try to create that um, into other shapes. So here I kind of like this little swoop. Um, so I'm gonna kind of probably create the reverse swoop of this one on that. So I'm kind of using some of the shapes that I've sort of created on the hood for the eyes. I wanna kind of make sure I bring some of that pattern into the rest of the form. I'm going to maybe make this to where this is a little bit more of the fleshy underside. And he's still feeling really kind of wide. Either either I have to sit there and make it to where his hood is out a little bit more like this. I, I don't know if you guys can kind of see it. I'm trying to, to make his face a little bit more balanced. So right now I'm looking for, for balance. Hacker, cheater. Not too sure what you're talking about, Aubrey. <laughs> you're going off on snack, nice snack, snick. Um, or if you have any kind of questions, just let me know. So I'm trying to balance, uh, because like in a cobra, a lot of the face is right in the inside and it kind of fluffs itself out to kind of just make itself two or three times larger than its original side. So I'm kind of trying to do that a little bit in the balance. I want to kind of not have his face or maybe his eyes um, be as pronounced. So the smaller they get, a little bit more vicious they get and snake-like. And then I'm going to continue building the form. That's squint, yes. And it's funny how just like a, a little bit of um, change, uh, and this is what I want you guys to kind of be aware of. You can just kind of, um, <laughs> can't help me. Um, you can just, it can change the character quite a bit. So by taking this and making the eyes larger, you know, it makes them a little bit more docile, you know, just, I mean, just because the expression comes into the, your character. So, um, you know, you can, you can just quickly add a little bit more brow and that makes it a little bit more towards the viciousness. Now, if I'm at level four right now, I'm going to go up to level five. If you want to test this out a little bit more, you could just go ahead and quickly add like a, a layer. Um, and then let's say I want to kind of test this out to where I 
bring in a few of these forms. Swoop it out a little bit more. Okay. Now, if I if you notice, I'm losing the eyeball. So let's say I like the way that this is kind of looking. You can always go to the eyeballs as well. Um, I don't have any divisions. So I'm going to divide. And then if I do a layer on that one, then I can quickly move these around to kind of start with my new form. This will be on a layer, and the other subtool will be on another layer as well. So I can check this out pretty quickly. Do I like that direction? Do I not? And then you just can turn off record, and you just turn off the eyeball on that layer to go back to this. Um, a lot of times when you turn on the recorded layers, it will pick up any kind of color you kind of do. So now, now that I have that layer though, um, I have to turn back on that record or delete it or um, go ahead and start another recording layer um, because it's not going to allow me to, it will start balking at me kind of saying, hey, you can't, you can't do this um, because you need to kind of have a recording because you started a layer, you have to kind of continue with the recording. Um, if you never started with it, then you don't have to worry about it. It's just on a continuously recorded layer. Hey, Eamon. How's it going, man? Thank you. I appreciate it, man. So, just have fun playing with some of your shapes and just look for forms. And then if you ever decide, um, I'm curious, and you're worried about losing what you want to do, um, you can do it that way. Or if I am liking this direction, but um, as I say, you kind of want to take it left at Albuquerque. Uh, uh, little Bugs Bunny kind of thing. Uh, you can actually just take a snapshot by, you know, saying this is where I want to pause. I'm going to go ahead and just make a duplicate. It just duplicates that subtool, and then you can turn that off. And then I can also do it with this one where I can say, what would it look like if I really up the forms? And I'm doubling that hood. Um, and then I'm kind of like, I want to kind of change this. And Okay. So then... If I turn that off, then I can go back and forth between those two subtools and go, do I like that direction? Do I not like that direction? Um, and then you can kind of just say, okay, I'm, I'm digging that direction. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger um, hood. So which which direction are you guys? Should I take a left at Albuquerque, guys? Or do you, do you like this direction? Or do you like that direction a little bit more? And then let's continue. First one answers. Or I might have to answer because nobody's saying anything. <laughs> or you don't like other one. If you, you don't like either direction, I can make a third one and I could try something else. So I can. Um, okay. <laughs> that, that's pretty, it's, it is honestly. It's sort of like the great thing about having a snapshot is you can kind of sit there and if you were worried about it or you're kind of like, well, I screwed up. I I didn't like that direction. Um, this time show a body of an alien. Oh, you want me to start showing a body of an alien? Usually I don't. I'm, I'm hitting, the reason I'm doing um, just the small heads and stuff like that is because other people have been doing like full bodies. Um, so at some point in time, I could always take one of these characters and continue uh, the bat looking one. Is that the bat looking one? The first one, okay. So we're gonna continue with this one. All right, but I have that, I have that secondary one just in case if, I, if we decide to go back. Um, at some point in time, Eamon, I think I will. I'll probably. I'll probably start doing some full characters and stuff. Like take it part of the direction and kind of do the whole scenes. Um, I'm trying to like, you know, just give some of you guys some ideas, and just to have some fun, because I'm always. I'm also trying to poly paint and do all. You know, try to do quite a bit within the, the stream, just so you can see it pretty quickly. And honestly, the the, the faster you are, or the more the more you do, the rinse and repeat of your sculpts and just getting in there and just exploring, the, the better and the faster I think you learn. Um, I've had a lot of students that concentrate on like doing a tank and they spend a month on it um, and the tank doesn't end up very well and then they only have one portfolio piece. So I try to sit there and have my students kind of go rinse and repeat, you know, take, it's not going to look good, but you're going to slowly learn the tech. You're going to get that technology behind you so you're, you're aware of the tech. Then you're going to be developing your eye and you want um, speed. So this is why a lot of times I do these little things just to kind of get in and out, not have anything that's, um, you know, think of them almost like, a, you know, the lunch heads. Uh, you just do like a lunch hour or two and you just kind of sculpt per day. And after like a month, you're sculpting a new head or a new creature every single day. 
within those 30 days, you might have one or two or five heads that you like, then you kind of develop and build upon those. If I spend 30 days on something I'm not really quite keen on, then I wasted 30 days <laughs> and I probably forgot a lot of stuff. So yeah, I, I Kevin, I tend to save a lot of, I'm a pack rat and I have tons of shit as you can see by my room. Um, I have a tendency to get kind of lost. Then that's another thing you get kind of like, what the hell were, was I doing? Where was that going? So thanks for all. I'll, I'll finish that up. The second one a later point in time, or I might actually take the two and kind of build it up. So I'm going to kind of start tying in these and I'm going to start putting some details into the mouth because I probably want to start building on, I might do some teeth. Even if I don't do teeth, I'm going to make the ridges of the mouth a little bit more exaggerated and I'm going to kind of define the nose area a little bit more. As I'm doing these, I was noticing that this is kind of, this line is going into the crossing over the nose. Um, it's my X pattern. Yeah, I don't know if you guys see the X. That's kind of like from here and there. That's kind of an X pattern that I'm sort of creating. I could either stop the X in the middle and come out or I can go through here and pick it back up at some point in time that's a little bit lower. Um, you try to find the patterns in your creatures that, like I said, you could try to pay attention. I'm going to stop the X right here. I'm going to let it kind of go over top and I'm going to start building up some of this line definition. So, because I want to define that nose I'm bringing this eye down a little bit more, uh, the eye pattern. And so when I do that, I'm going to start digging into, here's the crevice of the, the tear duct. So I'm going to kind of make this kind of an interesting pattern. Can you use Dynamish or normal subdivide? Um, you, you can Dynamish, Eamon. Um, but I mean, I, the reason I keep the, the divisions is because I like to move up, up and down really quickly. So I'm, I'm not kind of like, if I want to wipe out some details, I'm not wasting a lot of time trying to scrub it out. It's going to be scrubbed out pretty well. And I can go up on my levels and I, I kind of reduce. Um, but mainly what I want to, I keep these levels for is because I want to be able to move quickly. I want to kind of start, um, you know, being able to tweak pretty quickly. Uh, with it. Now, once you start going into um, Sculptress and all that kind of stuff as you divide and Dynamesh and um, like right now on this guy, this is getting pretty pulled. So to clean this guy up and bring him past a certain level, I'm going to have to re-Dynamesh to clean up this and give myself more definition. Um, or I can place something over top. Like let's say if I'm going to, let me do it, uh, take the eyes. Where's that? This one. Okay. I'm going to make a duplicate of these eyes. So let's say on these I want to hide that division or I want to sit there and um, maybe these, like he's got like little, like instead of ears, he might have like a sack that, you know, it's kind of like a heart, um, you know, that kind of is sitting there. You know, like that maybe his exposed eardrums. So he's like a snake that can kind of, you know, sense this is his sensory zones or some BS that you can kind of make up. Um, but I'm also covering up all that detail that I can actually, um, <laughs> that I don't have to clean up. So I could go back to here and go, ah, okay, that works, that does it. Um, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's part of the fun thing. That's why I toss a lot of like objects into my a kit bash. I'm concepting guys. I'm just kind of thinking out of the box. What works, what doesn't. Um, and a lot of times I don't like anything I create. Um, I'm just happy that some other people do. Uh, and just, you know, it's, I've met a lot of great artists that I respect just because, you know, some of them might know some of what I, what I do. That's part of the reason I do this. Uh, just a, it's like a fanboy that I kind of just work hard to sit there and meet some of the people that I respect. So I'm going to kind of start digging into this and defining. So right now I'm defining out that shape of that head and I'm defining out the muscle structure and how I want that to be. Um, 
I have the nose kind of coming. I might bring out the nose just a little bit more. And, I, and actually, I'm kind of liking that closed. Even though I have that mouth bag open, I'm kind of liking it closed, but I might define up the, you know, like maybe he's got a couple poison sacks or like, um, what do you call it, spitting. We're talking about cobras, so let's say maybe his spit glands are not inside, but is right on top of the mouth, or maybe he has, you know, a couple of them um, that we can kind of... How's it going, Nova? Yeah, uh, Eamon, it's just like, you just, you know, don't... Uh, when you're in Dynamesh and you're dealing with... And this is where a lot of people, I don't know if there's been a meme going around where, you know, the two, uh, those motorcycle guys are arguing about base and secondary forms and tertiary forms. And a lot of people just do a sphere and do tons of detail on top. That's the problem when you do Dynamesh. A lot of times you're stuck at your highest level. Like, they, they think they're... Like, right now I'm at 42,000. When you're stuck at the highest level, it's very difficult to move, and you're worried about all the details. You need to build up, as you guys have probably have seen, I'm building up the base forms. I'm just thinking of ideas, and I'm doing a few tertiary details, but these aren't these aren't really my final details. I'm just trying to think. I'm still concepting and how I want to make that work. Um, when you are stuck in Dynamesh, you're only concerned, and you're really stuck to the tertiary details, and it doesn't help you at all gets you kind of really lost um, on not making sure because uh, I've said this before and I'll say it again when you do tertiary details only it's like putting the roof on top of the house without the house it's gonna fall it's not you need the supports there you need to build the framing you got to build everything in the internals and it goes um, hey even mall mall croquetta badass badass uh, I can't I as, as uh, his faces are phenomenal. Another phenomenal artist. Appreciate you dropping by. Really cool guy. He should have been part of Grimm, but he, he's bigger and famous than us. Need to catch up too, buddy. See how things are going. Um, so when you're doing this kind of stuff, you need to build up your base forms and flesh out your ideas before you ever get to your, your tertiary details in the final levels. Because I don't know what I'm doing here, and let's say I've done a whole bunch of detail levels up and it's just not working. I've wasted a lot of time. Um, as you can see, I still have some of the detail from that original scan. Um, I've kind of built a negative into the back of this hood, so I'm gonna probably do a negative and build some quick muscle structure to the back of the hood. Of like it's being stretched and of course just stretching over top you just want to kind of go thin and build up some layers and then you just kind of dig in so some pockets so and what this will represent is like this is over top of muscle this is between a negative or it just gives some kind of interesting uh, details and stuff so I'm just kind of playing with the design and I'm not really too concerned with the back of the head because I'm probably not going to kind of finish it out. Most of the times so I've just been concerning myself with the front. And I'm going to build up a little bit of the muscles and structure in here to kind of help because that hood is pretty strong. That head is very big. So let's go ahead and bring that down a little bit. Now, if I was going to create a, you know, this guy, by just building up this chest cavity, you know, you can actually see it could probably fit to a larger body in the base. But uh, right now, I just want to concentrate on this little section. So I'm getting pretty close to being done before I start putting into the details where we're we at. Yeah, it's not even, which is good because I was having some trouble getting started, but um, so I was worried about it. So now I'm going to start building up into the secondary forms. Um, Yes, dogs. Jax? Spray bottle. Sorry. The, someone's, I'm getting package delivered. So, what'd I get? What'd you guys send me? So, I'm going to start putting up a little bit of the details. I'm going to bury underneath the cheekbones. Because I'm treating this like this is a bone structure. That, again, it still has skin over top of it. Um... And so when you have skin over top of bone, it starts to, you have like a high pitched area here and there. And so you actually see it. And then just like I was showing about the stretch skin on the back, it kind of really helps you to kind of pull back over there. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Rommel, and I appreciate it, Rommel. Uh, sorry, Kevin, I'm not trying to kill your productivity. Uh, Rommel's asking how... Let me see. How do you break up the form so you can see your steps in that? You're talking about, like... Um, well, right now on the character that I'm looking at, I'm just trying to sit there and, and see some of the shapes that she initially had. Uh, and again, let me go ahead and save this before I start kind of going off. Um, when she started out originally, I was just kind of taking a look at her initial... Uh, and if you hit solo, guys, that's uh, that's how you kind of do it. So I was just taking a look at some of her forms. Uh, and I decided I wanted to take out the nose um, in the ears because I said uh, Cobra. I just was kind of... Um, I saw somebody post it, so I was like, I'm just thinking of hood. But then I started taking a look at her, her brows and so um, and her chin. And I broke up the separated chin just to sit there because somebody was asking me about how do you do that. And so I was doing the mouth bags. And that just started bringing, that started helping me do the forms. Um, when I started going, let me see, I definitely, oh, now when you have this on, guys, quickly, the dynamic, if you turn on the dynamic when you turn, um, it will... It will solo around the only object, okay? Solo will just make it the object you have entirely. Um, so when I started doing that, uh, I started concentrating on the, the main forms of the face. And, con and usually how I start with my characters, I, I concentrate on the eyes. I, I, the eyes are really just, they will tell. Because that's where we see a lot of emotion. If I have eyes. If I take out the eyes, then I'm going to go to teeth. I'm going to go to some other strong sense of the character. Um, because it's like usually monsters, if you don't see any eyeballs, then it's pretty much you see teeth. And because you can't, you can't, uh, you know, like talk to somebody without you know, eyes. Or they, I mean, they're just a bull. They're just like in heat, ready to kill you kind of stuff. There's, there's no talking it out. <laughs> so, um, and then I, I pulled the eyebrows um, out, Rommel, and that's pretty much what kind of started helping me showcase what I wanted to do. Um, and then I started breaking up the forms. That's that's where I was talking about finding certain shapes that I like. So again, I was echoing um, like this hood that comes down with there. And, and then if you notice, um, I have a lot of X. So I have a lot of flow. I try to, at least I should say. So if you notice these hoods right here, it goes straight across into like a little infinity. Do you guys see that? So. That's a lot of times what I try to do. If I try to, if I pick off a line, or if I have a line going a certain direction, and it skips off the track, I try to pick it back up in some other way to lead your eye. Uh, like you know, uh, you really need to take a look at the old masters. They, uh, like especially painting, uh, where they were restricted to just 2D. You know, they were just to a flat surface. They were really trying to keep your interest and your eye moving around on the canvas. Like Rembrandt was phenomenal for that to where he, you would have an arm go just to the corner, just cut off enough that it wouldn't be bothersome to the eye because if you cut it off too much, then it looks odd and breaks down. But it led your eye out and then it used your eye to lead back into the, in the form, leading you to another direction. Um, it was ingenious and that's what a lot of the masters did. Uh, so a lot of times when I'm creating something, I'm looking for uh, some way to kind of pick up on that teaching and kind of take a look at what I want to um, bring my, you know, or the viewer's eye to. I'm not saying it's always going to be successful, but as I'm, as I'm doing that, that's what I'm kind of trying to find. Let's see. And then once I have, um, and usually, you know, I have flesh in most of the monsters, especially since I've been doing aliens and other kind of stuff. Um, if I have a design element, like I did these little, you know, pinchers or whatever, um, and I want to define it. I have a tendency to do these a lot. I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I like more sharp objects. Um, I, I don't mind blobby. You need to have round, and but you need to have sharp and flats as well. So, um, so it looks like I'm jumping around. That some people are guys. Uh, Adib, yeah, I mean. Yeah, when, when you're concepting, when you're creating, um, this creature right now, as in ZBrush, can be for games, it could be for movies, it could be for VR, it could be for whatever you want it to be, it could be for a print. Um, whatever your concepts and your creatures or whatever you're wanting to do, it's not, um, you know, it's, you, you've got to be aware. Like if I was designing, okay, let's say if I was designing this creature for games, 
I might be aware of the poly count that I'm stuck to. I have a certain, you know, uh, so I'm not going to have like a cloud or tons of spikes kind of coming out of this guy because my poly count uh, I might be limited. If it was for movies, then I really don't care about poly count, so then I might kind of do, do something really drastic into my design. And if I'm going to be doing for, you know, modeling this for a 3D print, I'm going to be very aware of what I can do. Um, like if I, if I do a whole bunch of spikes like this and a 3D print, it might break off easily and the person buying your kits might not appreciate. So I'm aware of that kind of thing. But um, right now I'm just trying to just have some fun. Um, but that's where you might have to start kind of becoming a little bit more aware of what you're, what you're creating for. So have an idea of it, but um, concepting is hard enough without being restricted. And um, so just be... Okay, so right now... I actually, since I've, I've broken this up so much, um, I need to kind of, since I pushed and pulled, uh, I'm going to go ahead and save really quickly. And I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm going to redynamesh this guy because at some point in time, like if I go here, if you if you look at my, I'm at my highest level right now, I am at 1.5. I can divide this again, but what's going to happen is it's, it's still going to, I'm going to have a lot of breakdown in this little area in the hood. If I decide not to use the little heart sacks or finish them out, um, the poly paint will break down and, and I want to kind of um, take those a little bit further. So I'm going to quickly make a clone. Plus this also show you guys how I, I kind of do it. Uh, I'm going to make a quick clone of this object. Okay, um, I have it at the highest level. I'm going to make a duplicate. How I personally go about it, I'm just going to go ahead and just delete this off really quick. Uh, I'm going to turn off my record. And I'm going to bring this down about 512. Why I do this right here, I don't have any groups on this. Mesh has layers. I thought I... Okay, bake all layers to close it out. I'm going to Dynamesh. By Dynameshing it down low enough, I'm trying to capture all the forms. Um, if this is too low, then just go up to like 1024 or 2048, you know, however you want to do it. It's sort of, you know, the divisions. Um, and then that way I could just go on here and the stream might kick out for a second here as it computes. And then I'm just going to go ahead and restream. I mean, uh, Z remesh. And then I'm going to go to solo and I'm going to double check the mesh to make sure I captured everything I need to. That's still pretty fine. These are kind of being twisted here. That's okay. And that's capturing all of my forms and it's kind of clean. It. Um, Z remesh works for maintaining, uh, Z remesh just kind of cleans up to give you the best polys to make it consistent for your high poly, you know, to, to add those details. Before those weren't high enough details, it was kind of being stretched. So in that same quadrant was being like four times the size of the quadrants around it. So details were getting lost. So um, that's why I'm trying to, to, to make a difference for it. Um, okay, so let me see. Um, so once you have this on the solo, I then am going to go ahead and control D to add a division. I'm just going to project. This is where it might kind of slow down, guys, so I apologize. I'll try to get through this fast. As I'm projecting, I'm going to make sure that I'm checking my projection because I might lose some areas here, okay, that it's not getting, or there might be some little sections that i got to be aware of. As you see right now, I'm kind of losing some of those details, okay? Now, either I can go... And I can sit there and do my projection shell right here, and I can up my projection shell just a little bit to grab those. I could also smooth. Get my projection again. At the same level, I'm going to project just to see how those work. Okay. Or I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go back down, and I'm going to... I'm going to go back down to a higher level. I'm going to... Z remesher, I'm going to re-Z remesh this one. Because sometimes if you don't give enough polys to those areas, it's just going to cause a problem. And then I'm going to go through that same process again. Alright, this got screwed up on that one. So let's repeat that step. Duplicate. 
I'm going to go a little higher up on my steps. This is where you kind of have to play around sometimes just to actually, um, dang it, big call. Because sometimes it doesn't always work. First time. Okay, it's computing. And it looks like I'm having some problems on the Facebook. It kind of it looks like it's reducing or taking away certain things. Again, I'm going to take a look at this, double check. Everything looks okay. Come back out of it. I want to turn off Dynamesh. And I'm going to project. Control D. Project. Okay. Seems to be picking up pretty well. Project. Okay. So as you see, I'm getting a lot better. It's weird, I'm getting some weird breakdown right there for some reason. Okay, project. So, let's clean that up really quickly. Something's happening here for some reason. Okay, that zero measure got really screwed up, that's why. Okay. For some reason right there, when I was in the Dynamesh, it got screwed up. So let's take a look. I'm going to go three. Now, the higher you go onto the target polygons in the beginning of the Zebra Mesh, all that's going to do is when you divide it up, it's just going to be a higher level. Your base level is going to be a lot low, uh, higher than normally that I keep it. But I'm having problems catching some of this detail for some reason. It's not, it's giving me issues. So... So you like, look at that right there. I don't know why. If you have to where that is kind of a pinch, just go ahead and hit zero mesher again. And what that is going to do is going to try to clean up part of that algorithm. And then hopefully this should be good enough to capture all that detail. So I'm going to project, divide. So few areas for some reason still giving me issues, but I'll deal with them. I'll, I'll clean them up in my sculpt. I'm not too far in that I haven't done tons of detail into it. And so I can kind of just clean this up. Okay, sorry if I lost you guys on the stream there for a minute. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to call this reworked. Okay, and I'm going to bring this back in. I'm going to insert it just underneath. And that way I can hide this one. Okay. And then I'm just going to go and clean up some of those different areas. I didn't quite transfer. Of course, I can go down a little bit lower. Do this quickly. Is everybody still with me? Did I, did I pull you guys back out of the stream? Okay. So right now, I'm a little bit higher than normal. I'm just going to clean up. And if you saw right there, this is I have enough polygons that I can smooth this out. Whereas before, I wasn't quite capturing a lot of that detail. Did I lose you guys, or are you still here? Just anybody to say hey. Because I haven't seen an update on my stream or comment here in a bit. Sweet. Thanks, Infinite. Plus, I got a, quite a bit of rain over here, so it's kind of... We lost cable for a little bit yesterday. So glad to see it's back up. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of clean up a, a few of those details. I'm going to add in a few more details because I'm going to start pulling this into alphas to start getting into poly paint. So 
So these are the secondary forms, kind of touching into the tertiary details. I'd say the alphas are a little bit more detailed. How's it going, Unknown? How's it going, Anali? Okay. So I'm going to add some crow's feet or some extra detail into the eye section. How's it going, Adip? Again, good to see you back. All right. And then this is where I can kind of just bring in some of that extra detail and define. I'm going to bring in a little bit more flat lines or surfaces to kind of help define out the eye. Okay. And I don't know if Facebook is still kind of connecting. So if you're on Facebook trying to say hi and I'm not commenting, I, I'm having trouble. Facebook has been giving me a bear today, so I apologize. Okay. So I'm going to dig back into that nose cavity. And I'm going to... Now this, this jaw is separate, so I'm just going to kind of, you know, because it's from here, I'm going to just kind of start to blend this just a little bit by embedding it. I'm doing some added detail to kind of hide the fact that that's separate. Now again, this is so if I... Um, you know, want to open it up. That's where I can quickly change the design, add teeth, um, all kind of stuff. How's it going, Kid, uh, Kid Greer? Welcome to Turkey. So, once you have those things set up, you can just add that detail. I'm going to age them up just a little bit and define some of those lines. I have going. And alphas will help in a second, but and I'm going to this is kind of like a his eye hood, so I'm just gonna kind of sharpen up a few of these edges. Hey, how's it going, Brandon? Thanks for joining, man. I appreciate it. You guys should need to check out Brendan's thing as well. He does some great stuff. He's been working on a cool character. He's been doing the full character that you guys were asking about earlier. So you can see the process from the start to finish. So I'm just going to add some damage. I'm like if I'm going to kind of treat this as some spikes. So. I'm just putting down my brush, guys, and I'm just kind of swooping back and forth. I'm not really concerned. Again, I'm having fun. I'm just designing. I'm defining. Um, you know, if I make the wrong swoop, if I make the wrong brush, I could just wipe it back out. Um, so I'm not really concerned. Because I'm just trying to have fun and answer you guys' questions. So, ask away. All right, and let me just define up the, so maybe that's the start of his snake pattern or whatever. It starts to echo, so I can make that a little bit bigger, make it beefier. Start of his vertebrae-ish. Yeah, it looks like Facebook cut out of me, so I apologize, guys. Um, looking from the side, I'm going to probably bring this in just a little bit. Or, let's see what it looks like if I bring it out a little bit more. Which I think it kind of helps. You need to swoop it. It's almost kind of like he's got hair, or like it's his form, his shell. So, because remember, I was trying to, to make this his hood. I was having trouble sweeping out some of the details, so that's why it's great to go, to go up and down the levels, because now I can quickly reduce those. I can push and pull very quickly to test out my forms. And then I want to define this as kind of like a cape, a hood, that goes around his muscle structure right here. Okay. All 
All right. And again, my dynamic perspective, if you guys want to change your perspective, you know, you can play with that a little bit. That will change the way you kind of look at it. If I turn that off, that's the full straight side. Turn that back on, that's a little bit of perspective. I'm doing good, man. I've been busy, uh, which is always good. And uh, having fun doing like the, the ZBrush Lives. This is kind of getting me out, doing a little bit more towards the uh, poly painting, which I don't like to do. So that's why I started doing this. So I'm going to define out this nose pretty much, and I'm going to start getting to that. So to do that, I'm going to just kind of take, well, here, we didn't really, we just tossed these in. So do you guys like it with or without? We got to decide. And here, we can, we can define this hood a little bit more you know, with some patterns or, or whatever, just to kind of, like if we're gonna sweep this back up. So let's just say, okay, so he's got like that or that. Thanks buddy, I appreciate it. Okay, first one answered, decides, decides our direction with or without. Or all you guys fell asleep. With, okay, done. Anthony, answer first. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you answering. So let's go ahead and just define out these a little bit more. I'm going to add some, some vein edge or something to kind of give. <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. He was quicker. Yeah, it's the good thing is just like with, with you know, you could always, I could always take those out. Um, or like if you said, if it feels a little bit heavy, you could always just pull back you know, maybe they deflate them just a little bit, so they're not quite as exposed. Um, this is this is the cool thing about ZBrush. You could really define quite a lot of different things to it, um, and you go back and forth. I mean, that's the thing. It's just kind of um, it could be a cool feature, but having them as separate sub tools. If you have it, let's say an art director, you go, I don't know about that. Done. Okay. If I sculpted those in, then I would have to kind of re-sculpt everything else. I had to have it back and forth, but I can go place and pull. Now on this one as well too, I can actually do something uh, pretty cool that I'm, if I'm debating, like you guys were asking with, without, it's too big, it's not too big, however you want to deal with it. You can always go down to, within the layers, We have, remember we had the layers, I can create another layer. I could also create something called a morph target. So going down to morph target, I'm going to store this morph target. And then that I can come in here with my um, Oops, I meant to do a morph target on that, store that morph target. And then I can come up with my in-flat brush and I can go, you know, there. Now with this morph target stored, I can actually go back in, you know, like it's breathing or whatever, and I can play with those little sections. I could also go to the morph brush, which is really cool to, where you at, morph? And then I can actually go in certain sections and say, okay, I like this part, but I want to kind of reduce a little bit. Turning down the, the intensity of the morph, uh, I forgot, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's just pretty much straight on. So, uh, And you can morph out certain sections back to it. Um, so that's another cool thing to kind of, and since I morphed that out, I have to kind of undo that to remember, because I didn't store that new morph target. So you can do that, and this is the exact same thing as, as like it is with layers. So, or I can sit there and kind of have them breathing. So and this is where I was talking like eardrums, these kind of like some weird, you know, and I'm, I'm animating, so. <laughs> so I'm going to probably just go back, take that off. Um, okay, it's invalid because I took off the morph. So I've added some of the detail on it. So let's get back to this chin. It's only a 42,000. I'm gonna go up to the highest level. Um, and I'm going to start doing some. Thank you, Craig, I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, what's going on, bro? Yeah, the morph targets are pretty, pretty sweet. Yes, pro, very good. Uh, yeah, um, pro brought up the fact that they could entice the ladies. Exactly. A lot of nature, pulling from nature is great. And so that's one of them. It's like you could just say um, that, uh, yeah, it is to, I mean, just like you see a lot of animals, they, they blow up or they do something else that actually had uh, to impress. So, 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some alphas. How's it going, Jose? Uh, where's my alphas? So, and I'm going to, I'm going to go, I have a tennis, I really like that elephant skin. It can go for a lot, to be quite honest. Uh, I'm just going to try to pick one that's a little bit more defined. On this one right here, um, I can add... You notice that one that's too low. I'm at 266, so I might have to go up in levels to actually, if I want to do anything from there. That's way too much, so my intensity needs to drop down. Now, just because it works, this intensity works for this subtool doesn't mean that that intensity has to will work for another subtool. It changes based on your subtool range and stuff. I'm going to divide up uh, 4 million is quite a bit for these suckers, um, but as you notice, I'm going to get a lot more detail, um, but I don't, I don't really need that. These probably won't have a lot of Kind of, I'm just going to pull in just a little bit, and I'm going to, to wipe them away. If if I want to have some of the detail, but not to the, and this wiping away is too much. Remember, that's why I go down into different levels. I can come down here and just wipe it, and when I come back up, it's reduced a lot. Now I could also go with my intensity when I'm sweeping my RGB intensity, or my int I'm sorry, not my RGB. Hold down shift, my intensity on my smooth brush. I can always just knock down just a little bit to kind of help keep some of those details, but not too much. When I hold down shift, I'm going to go back to 100. So now let's add some of this to the snake. And so what I'm doing is I'm just looking to kind of bring in some of this detail. Now, I could do a layer as well. Um, I'm not really concerned about the layer. Um, and I've had a lot of problems where I've done layers and all of a sudden like it got corrupt or a user error on my part, always user error. I am excellent at breaking crap. So I have a tendency to just kind of try it. If I don't like it, I could just always reduce it, take it out. And I'm going to just add a few of these things. Hey, how's it going, Cesaro? Um, appreciate you joining. How's it going, Jux? Um, yeah, just follow the beat. That's right, Aiden. Um, just set wake him to one screen to go to mapping set to a monitor. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I want to keep it on this screen, Adib. Um, but yeah, you can play around with it. Uh, what was your question? No, this is the the material is actually called Z98. I love it, to be quite honest. It's one of my favorites. Uh, sorry, Kevin, that there's a delay. And uh, I appreciate it, Pas Pasiso. I keep forgetting to check out Facebook. I apologize. Most of the time it's been in my one like little window. And I'm noticing that... Uh, in the stream that it's really small for you guys so I'll try to figure out how to make that a lot larger so you can see what everybody's saying um, so yeah the Z98 is usually what I have a tendency to, to use right here for my sculpts I mean I know there's a lot of people that kind of go over top and they like to use a lot of different uh, materials I know Oscar likes the red wax I, I hate it um, but different different people different different things so um but when you are sculpting the reason i like the z98s or something that has a pretty good mid-range um is because it it allows me to see like even the zebra this one it allows me to see the base the secondary forms the tertiary forms really easily the reason i like the color is it's more towards the green clay kind of stuff that i've used before um and it just kind of helps me visualize and see what's going on if you're having problems seeing those details then that's not a good material um, it might look fancy and might be kind of cool, but you know, if at the end, if your material is making your sculpt look cool, then you've done it wrong. Um, it shouldn't. It should be based on your sculpt. Um, I mean, that's why that's why you're trying to do it. So, okay, I'm going to kind of. I'm using some of the direction. Notice this needs to kind of go back in a little bit for my eardrum. So I just, oops, moved, and then I'm going to kind of slightly start to turn this direction down okay. uh, Eamon there's there's a whole bunch of like um, CG textures are used to have the beats where you can grab a lot of stuff I mean you can you can Google um, and just like look for alpha textures a lot of places are charging you quite an arm and a leg on some of those things um, uh, but I mean they're they're good you know um but 
it's uh you know this one i got from 3dsk i think a long time ago the elephant you can always create your own alphas as well too um and i know on the pixelogic website and a couple other stuff there's you can grab those um I mean, I, I'm, I'm using this one alpha right now. I'm going to kind of swing it up and change to another one here in a second. But I don't use a lot of alphas. I mean, usually you're just trying to grab enough information so when you're rendering, you can actually pick up some of the skin details. So how long does it take to learn ZBrush properly? Okay, which uh, a long time. <laughs> no, it, um, to learn ZBrush is pretty quick. Once you get past, you know, the... I mean, if you noticed... If you've been watching, I've just I've kept to a certain amount of brushes. I only use seven brushes, um, so I have my standard, my move, my trim dynamics, pinch clay, in flat, and my damn standard. Those are the only brushes I really use to sculpt. Um, the problem with ZBrush it is so powerful. It's the most pro powerful program. Take six programs that I use, put them together. That's ZBrush. That's what it's like. So you can get you can just fall down the rabbit hole and never come out because there's so much information you can use. Um, I try to keep it very simple. I have the basic startup window kind of stuff and I keep to certain materials and certain things just to make it easy for you guys to understand. Because you only really need about 20% of whatever you need to do for your job. Um, so just be aware. Don't don't you know don't worry about all these different techniques to actually you are the artist. This is a tool. Um, so it uh, it's a very good tool, but <laughs> it's just, you know, uh, be aware of that. You don't need to know every single little trick in the book to do it. Yeah, Pavlovich. Um, uh, he's he's great at kind of going over a lot of the quick basics. We actually have a lot of the ZBrush Live channels. You can go over a lot of different things and techniques, and you're always welcome to ask, and I will try to do it. Um, but yeah, no, no, but yeah, I don't I don't think there's they keep adding stuff to ZBrush, so you have to keep learning stuff. Um, but um, but I've been doing this since 2005. Um, but it was you know it's pretty much just. Um, I mean, I mean, I pick up certain different techniques and stuff, but I'm, I'm pretty much, um, I don't, I don't worry myself with tons of like different techniques to, to freak me out. So I'm just adding a little bit of detail, and I didn't do anything in the front here. I might bring up a little bit more of the harsh skin over top of the nose, maybe not so much. I don't like that. So let me go back to, let me go back to that. I forgot to uh, add some detail into the mouth and the nose areas. And I'm going to probably bring up some kind of like sharp crow's feet kind of stuff, alpha, to kind of help add up. Now, if you notice like this alpha, it starts out with a positive. So when I swipe, the alpha is coming out. So I just have to make sure I'm holding down to dig in just like I would on the brush. So I kind of give some of that different area. And I'm just going to use these just to blend in my shapes just a little bit. So it kind of, it's going from skin to to bone, or and I'm also using it to kind of break up some of the forms and give you direction. So now let me go ahead and do that with the chin just a little bit. Because most of this is, I'm kind of going to treat this as harsh. And then I'm going to go back to here, and I'm going to bring up some bumps. So I'm going to go look for some kind of human uh, alpha bump towards the nose so uh trim dynamic brush is um it's sort of in a way yeah the high poly brush mixed with like a pinch and it, I, I like it um I, I like it a lot better than the um uh, here let me, let me pick this real quick and i'll show you face um, I like it a lot better than the um, trim adaptive. I still can't figure that. That's based on screen distance, blah, blah, and I always kind of screw up. So <laughs> I have problems with it. So I'm, I'm using the like the, the zits um, to kind of add a little bit more detail, and usually in the cheek areas. And this is also to catch up for some of the renders if I do those later. And then if I hold down Alt, I'm kind of going in and out just to kind of give some extra detail. And I want to bring that up into the chin. So where you might have some stubble. So maybe down in the neck stubble too. Not too much. I mean, I'm not really worried about it. Okay.
Yeah, I mean, um, rigging, you can do the rigging with your transpose and a couple other stuff, and you, could, you can do quite a few things with a ZBrush, but um, it kind of, um, it's a very powerful tool. But different programs will have different, different benefits, uh, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I think it's definitely worth, ZBrush should be in everybody's toolbox. Okay, so now that I'm going to go towards um, uh, rendering, I'm gonna well, I'm gonna start poly painting and stuff. So let me check everything else. So sorry if I'm not catching your Facebook. Um, I'm gonna start going to color. So when I take a look at this guy, of course snakes are more towards the green. I'm gonna switch up my material because for my sculpting material, I like to use Z98. I usually go to the Zebra Illustrator paint. Um, to deal with this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to um, probably detail it as eyes. I'm going to go into my standard brush. I'm going to switch over to RGB and turn that off. And I'm just going to kind of turn off my alpha on this one. And I'm going to fill it with color fill object. But I also want to make that kind of shiny. So I'm going to, uh, let's add like a toy plastic. Um, I had the material on and I say color fill object. And then I'm going to go back to my Zebra. So when I turn, you see that little shininess. And I'm going to go back into RGB. And I'm going to just, what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm just going to add like a little shadow. Okay. And then let's pick up this color again wherever we were. Let's bring a little bit of. And all I'm doing is I'm just trying to make some, right now, just somewhat realistic eyes. I'm not really concerned about any kind of detail. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I want to kind of just give myself some eyes that help me work this out a little bit. Yeah, I mean, definitely take a look at a lot, a lot of episodes. It really kind of helps. Um, to go over on what you want. Now, I don't want to go directly to green. I want to kind of build up. I'm probably going to go to more earthy tones. So I sort of want to kind of probably build up something dark um, versus my layer. So I'm going to build off of something. So I want to, to start dark. Um, you, just like in the Masters, I was talking about, you're kind of building up your layer slowly and you want to build from darks to lights. Um, just a little bit easier. So I'm going to start with something just a little bit earth tone. And I'm going to go to color. I'm going to turn this up to 100 real quickly. And I'm going to say color fill object. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to my chin. And I'm going to say fill object. Okay. So now those two are, are sectioned out. I don't know what I'm going to do for the eardrums. It's probably going to be more towards um, red, purples. Um, it's kind of snake-like. So I think I'm going to have some blues in there. So I might try to set with something a little bit towards the middle of those two tones. That's good, okay? And I'm just gonna leave that. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just trying to set my base idea, so what I want for my color. And then I'm gonna go back up. Um, how to create hole effects in the eyes? Um, are you, you talking about the irises? Irises, you just go to black and you go bing. There you go. So, or a snake, you might be it's kind of frog. So, or if you want to, you know, if you want to dig in, you just create a hole. Uh, you can have RGB Z subtraction and RGB at the same time, and then dig as you're putting in. I think I like him, where you can't quite mess with him right now. Like he's he's not he's not there. He's that. Um, you can't you can't talk to him. You can't argue with him. So now that I've I've got this color, I'm going to start building up. I'm going to stay in the browns for like a little bit, and then I'm going to probably pick up a color on top. So what I usually do is I go to my drag rectangle, rectangle, and then I'm going to pick like a blotchy kind of color, and I'm about 40, and I'm just going to start making sure that I'm okay. Let's make sure RGB is on. I'm on the correct color, and I'm going to pick up. Okay, didn't didn't grab. I was going over the same color. It wasn't didn't grab me. Color one in. So now I'm just going to start filling out my forms just a little bit, 
And so what I'm doing is I'm going to start picking up the highlights of things I want to accentuate. I want to have some depth in certain areas, and then I'm going to kind of slowly pick up certain areas that I want to start popping, okay? And i got to remember that the mouth is separate, so I was trying to sweep over top of it, and I realized it wasn't working, so. And the neck is going to be probably dark, so I'm not worried about that. So as you can see, it's just like I'm starting to get a little bit of splotches. It kind of breaks up the skin, gives it a little bit of interest. Um, and again, I'm not really concerned about the back of the head, so I'm just doing this pretty quickly. I'm going to concentrate mostly on the front, but I want to make sure that it's, you know. So on these little little things, I'd probably go ahead and finish up the back of the neck a little bit more. And even though I'm, I've already kind of, you know, switched over to poly painting, I could always go back and pick up color or uh, pick up any kind of movement or sculpt that I want to bring back into it. So I probably want to keep this kind of dark, like it's going to kind of have like a little bit of pinch of darkness to it. And then I want this to be... And all I'm doing is I'm switching over subtools, I'm hitting the Alt button to kind of switch back and forth. So... Okay. And this will probably mix in with you know, I'm going to have some flesh tones or some things that are going to kind of mix in, uh, mix in with the um, blue purples and stuff like that. So if I want to sit there and do that now, I could just grab some of those colors. Because those are the, that's the dark of the flesh. So what I'm doing is I'm tying in the color I chose with some of the color that's going to be mixed in with that eardrum. So as you can see, some of those purples are starting to go in there. And all, all that does is it helps tie those two pieces that are separate now because of the color, but now color is going to start blending them in. Um, so, and it's, this is also more towards a warm. So I'm going to kind of bring in some of that color for the warmth of where the flesh might meet the skin or some depth um, to where, you know, the gum lines or the nostrils start to bring into it. And I'm going to pick it up on here as well and then bring in some of that color so i only have three colors on the sucker already so but you're able to see some of those forms start to pick up and that's what you want you want to slowly slowly kind of start using the variation of color to start picking up your details i'm going to hit c to pick up that color again and i'm going to go up a little bit lighter now, at some point in time, when I go into the higher levels, I'm right now I'm going into my mid colors, uh, my values. I'm going to switch over to a lighter green or towards a more yellowish green to kind of start getting more of that snake look. Um, possibly. I mean, um, it depends on... Maybe I can bring him into feeling okay with the color browns that I have and see what that gets me. You guys have any questions? And you can see it here a little bit better if you see that little splotchy breakup of the skin. If I had just a flat part of the skin, I would be very, you know, it's just, color has a mixture of everything in it. I mean, it's just like, it's just, you got to kind of have some variation to it, otherwise it feels flat. And in nature especially, you're going to see a lot of variation of tones and things that separate from each other while blending, if that makes sense. Okay. Let's pick up some of this color on the back. Do you usually make a low poly with UVs too? Uh, I, I don't um, for this. Um, if I did low poly with UVs, that's that's pretty simple to do, but I, I haven't touched it. That's more of my game aspect that I do. This is more towards like ZBrush um, tutorials. Um, 
And, but when I teach, I actually go from high poly all the way to final in-game asset um, and try to make sure you guys pay attention. So this is more oriented on the high poly c creation kind of kind of aspect to the to what I do. This is the fun stuff, coffee. Low poly, but <laughs> I'm good at it, unfortunately, but I, I don't like it at all. See, yeah, the Marvel Alien. I guess I had, had some Marvel into it. With non human skin tones, how do you choose colors for areas that have more blood or fat or bone? Um, that's where I'm starting to go to the purple. I was debating, like, okay, if we, you know, we know human blood is red, even animals are. Once you start doing kind of creatures, you start going to the alien, the green blood or the blues and kind of stuff. I was trying to pick a hue that it could actually help separate this guy but it kind of ties in like if i if i want to just stark red which is like the the normal for that it just doesn't feel i'm, I'm going to probably bring in some reds but i it just doesn't feel as uh, i don't know i actually kind of like a little bit of the cooler um aspect of of this color tone but you can you can do whatever colors you want to it if you have some translucency under the skin whatever colors i have here if i want to say like um there's some like translucencies, then you kind of pick it up into the areas and the corners and you have certain highlights that kind of um, look like it's red underneath. So let's say if I was going to say this, I'm picking up the color here, I'm gonna go just a little bit up. And on here, if I just wanna bring in just like a little bit of like underneath that skin, you can see some of that blood. There's some subtleties. You just barely put it in there and then it'll kind of look like, oh, okay, there's some um, blood underneath it. Um, that's that's pretty much how you do it. It's, it's yeah, the violet blood. <laughs> you can you can just kind of whatever color you want to make it. You you just kind of test it out. If if the colors aren't working together very well, then then you kind of change it up. So that's where you can kind of. So let's bring in. I'm I'm bringing in a little bit more of the purple since we we're talking about it. And I'm doing the highlights just enough. But I might go over towards the magenta. I bring down the subtleties here, and get more of that warm red into it. That I can kind of pull back into here in certain areas. So even though I don't have a lot of detail into it, I might bring some different color variations into it to make it look like it's got some um, type of things going on. And I'm using the alpha to kind of help break that up as well. So by having that translucency underneath, like barely being there, it's going to look like something's underneath just the skin area. If I want to pick that up even more, kind of like I can actually just do, you know, some some vein lines over top to like this is the highlight of the skin capturing capturing the light. And then so then you have some darkness underneath and it just starts to look like there's a thin veil of skin that kind of goes over top of this. So um, these are some of the techniques you can kind of use to, to play. And if I have that veinage, you know, Let's say if I want to, let's do like more of a purple veins kind of going. Now, you could always turn on like the Z edition if I'm going to be adding veins and I want to add more, then that's where you can kind of bring in a little bit. And then once I have those veins, I'm going to go to a higher pitch light and I'm going to kind of go back over top. Just a few areas of highlights. Because the highlights, it's kind of like it's going up and down into, you know, in space. So where it hits the highlight, then that's where it's the highest and it's almost right up against the skin. Where it goes dark, you're not going to see it. So I'm faking by that value, it twisting and turning through underneath that skin. It's like a little trick of the eye kind of stuff. So, and then, you know, I can always just blend back out. Um, or grab that color if I want to knock it back just a little bit, I can, you know... Put color over top of it. Oops, I had Z edition on. To where I can push that underneath the skin so you barely see it. Okay. Those are some tricks um, to kind of make it look like it's kind of avocado ish, or like not avocado, eggplant ish, I guess I would say. 
So, and this, this color right here might be a little bit too much, so I'm just going to kind of, I can just wipe it back a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Alright, so let's get back to here. I'm going to probably bring in some highlights here pretty soon. I'm going to start bringing a little bit more yellow, not down. Make it a little bit more pale. Because I'm using the mixture of all those skin tones, the different colors underneath, with a higher value that's kind of saturated, desaturated. And what that does is it helps kind of gets me a little bit towards that yellow. Um, but knocks back, it intermixes with that green, so it just helps push out some of those details. I'm going to kind of definitely start separating out some of like this lighter skin to the bone. And I'm just swiping really quickly, guys. I'm just kind of finding areas that I kind of want to highlight, separate. Like maybe this is going to be a little bit darker, and then this might pop out a little bit more because it's like a, a lighter the skin. Um, you know, or maybe some of the cheekbones might pick up some of that as well. And then. Usually the top of the head, though, is going to have probably the lightest value. That's usually where sun hits. and So you're kind of picking up some of what you'd see in real life. And then I'm going to kind of pick up a few of these areas to help pop out some details in the neck. And then on the shoulders here. I'm going to lighten up. Okay. How are we doing on time? 2.15. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do a round of detail, meaning I'm going to kind of take off my rectangle. I'm going to go to just no alpha. And I'm going to start kind of bringing in some lines and some detail work into it that I kind of want. Um, so I'm going to pick a little bit of the white and I'm going to start highlighting out certain parts of this to kind of really pop. Yeah, almost like an ancient alien kind of, um, you know, some of the details that I just kind of want to really push forward. So like if I have any kind of, you know, the highlights on the nose, you can start to see that I kind of, I'm leading that eye down. I could blend, if I go too powerful, like let's say I got a little bit too high on this, uh, on my value, went a little too high, I can always just go back over with a color and blend, which I will probably do. And But I'm just trying to bring out a few details that I want to get. And so I'm just, I'm changing the amount of pressure that I'm using. And I'm just bringing in some of those. Okay. Hopefully you guys on Facebook are still able to hear me and see me. I apologize again for all the issues we had today. Okay. Now on here where it's gone light, I'm going to go dark. I'm going to quickly jump into my darks to kind of darken down certain areas that I want to knock back. I don't want to go full black. I just want to kind of keep some color into that and Take that down a little bit. Because I'm almost kind of using that like some eyebrows to kind of lead your eye and add some fake shadow into this.
how do you decide what amount of proportions of each entity to combine and doesn't end up looking too weird even when I bat. Um, Warlock, it's just, it's a back and forth, back and forth, uh, to be quite honest. I mean, sometimes you might go a little too extreme and then you have to kind of pull it back. Now, the great thing is, it's like I still can go into my sculpture and I can still play with it once I have my color everything else. If it's not working or it doesn't feel right, that's why I was talking about the different steps and you can kind of play around and you just can see what works and what doesn't. Um, it's, you know, and you're the creator. So you're, you're you know, whatever you think. Um, that's the great thing about doing stuff for yourself is like, you know, whatever you think is good and you're happy with it. As long as you're happy with it, because uh, I'll tell you something, guys, you're always going to have somebody that will complain. You're always going to have somebody that sits there and says they don't like your work. Um, who cares? <laughs> to be quite honest. It, I mean, it's just like, good God, it's, uh, you can't please everybody. So, I mean, I, I usually tell students, it's sort of like dating different women. I thought I knew how to fold towels until I started dating another woman. And then, you know, that next woman told me I did it wrong and everything else. So it's sort of like you're always going to have a different person see something and go, yeah, I, uh, this is how I would approach it or this is where you did wrong. Um, now, if you have a client that's telling you that, you know, whatever they say, as long as they're paying you. But when you're doing stuff for free, you don't listen anyway, except yourself. Um, so I kind of have a tendency just to kind of, if it looks pleasing enough to me where I don't think I see an issue, then I'm happy with it. But um, I will give you a hint that um, take a break. Whenever you do a character or, you know, you, you think something's good, try to take a step back um, from the haze um, because it allows you to kind of see some of the issues that you might have missed while you were concepting. Um, also take a look at, you know, turning things upside down and, you know, taking a look at shapes that you might not notice and that might not work. Um, uh, so there's a lot of things you can kind of do. Um, I'm definitely not liking some of this right now, like that I need to pop out. Either I need to bring those back or bring these together. So I'm going to kind of bring some highlights up on some of these because I wasn't seeing enough of the cheekbone. Yeah, seriously, bro, try it out. <laughs> I thought I knew what I was doing. Nope. But yeah, I just, it's, it's a joke, but yes, it's true. So. I still can't fold towels. I, I don't think I ever will. And, uh, I'm married now, so I, I've tried to learn, but I still get it wrong every once in a while. But this time on purpose. So I don't have to do it. So I'm going to I'm going to wipe out this a little bit. Like I'm not liking some of that turn. So I'm just reducing a little bit of that um, color. I had a lot of these lines, so I think I want to kind of reduce these just a little bit. All right. Because I have a lot of line work kind of going up in that direction, so I just want to reduce. <laughs> yeah, no. There you go. Once you're married, do it all wrong. My dad doesn't, still doesn't know how to do toast. Yeah. Smart man. <laughs> so actually, when you're kind of now, I'm going to start picking up some of these colors, and I'm going to blend. And the reason I'm doing, uh, let me go ahead into um, solo. I want to start bringing that color into the, more of the fleshy and underneath the eyes and stuff, because this is going to blend and make it consistent and work with some of the details you got in here, or that I've had going in here, because I want to sit there and tie it all together. Before I finish out, um, no, I, I deep. I'm not using reference. I'm just, I'm just goofing around. Um, but use reference. I mean, it's. I mean, when you concept, you can. You, there's going to be certain things I kind of like or I fall towards, and I see certain shapes of mine that I kind of I sweep back into. So I'm kind of, you know, um, I'm 
bringing in things that I like, certain shapes for sure. I see. Um, I don't mean to. I just kind of they kind of creep in, but no, at the moment I'm, I'm not. If I I do look at reference, I do look at a lot of reference though. Um, just for these, it's more I'm just showing you guys to look at. I'm using the actress this head that I started from as my reference, and I'm using parts from her to build off of it. Okay, so now I'm just kind of bringing up some of those colors. How am I doing in time? 250, okay. So now I'm going to bring in some highlights before I go into any kind of like super detail. Thank you, I appreciate it. Art, the art of struggle, good name. Okay. So he looks pretty, pretty fair. I'm trying to play with, the, the nose is still bothering me. And it might just be the fact that I just have a highlight. So um, I'm going to take this color on here and I'm going to not use move. I'm going to darken and I'm going to give him a stripe. I want to lead your eye up in a way. It's kind of, right now, it's hitting in the center and it's just kind of not moving. So I want to kind of lead your eye around and try to find a different direction. And I also am not really liking the highlight I put right there. So I'm going to reduce that just a little bit and blend. Because remember what I was like saying? It's like I want to kind of have a separation. Um, so maybe this is more of the highlights that we see. And we're going to pick it up here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to add a little bit more separation of the skin tones. I'm giving... Usually when I do a lot of the characters, I try to have three things that go into it. Um, three different material hits. So you have your eyes able to move around and kind of see a couple different things. Um, same thing with flesh tone. If I have a character... Um, having it have, you know, like um, hard flesh, you know, like a rhino skin uh, uh, underneath of the flesh, wherever it's kind of exposed, um, or bone, you know, certain things that you're having, um, it goes. Um, Lion Fox, uh, simple question if appropriate as entry level freelancer, what rates are normal? Whatever you can get. Um, uh, <laughs> it's hard. Uh, basic freelance. You need to pretty much, one, figure out how much you actually need to survive. That's your, your main thing. You kind of figure it out, like, whatever your bills are, whatever you're going to do. Um, and then you need to figure out, okay, I need 25 to survive, 35. You also have your years that you've got plus your portfolio. That makes a big difference that you can step it up. But plenty of times, whatever you put out there that you think is fair for what your work is going to be, you're always going to have somebody else that thinks it's about $25 less, okay? Um, so you have to be very willing to walk away from the client, walk away from an opportunity. If you have clients that are kind of like, oh, this would be great for exposure, screw exposure, you can do your own. Um, you put it out there on Facebook and everything else. It used to be a lot harder to get exposure, but if you're going to be doing stuff for free, do it for yourself. I will, you know, that's my biggest thing. And the problem with a lot of artists today, they will undercut other artists to get the job. So um, where it really kind of hurts everyone because you're not... You're doing stuff for free, pretty much. Um, but try to figure out how much that is that you actually need and then slowly build up on your client list and make sure if you get the job, you're aware of how long it's going to take you. All that stuff, so you don't go underwater on it. Um, but the client, I mean, your, your networking is a big part of freelance that a lot of people do not realize. And I have a very good network of friends and people I've worked with that allows me to, because there's better artists out there than me by far, but um, because of that network and uh, previous work experience where I've come through, that helps me survive. Um, where I try to help out friends and they just, you know, they're better, but they, uh, you know, they don't have that connection, the client or somebody else that hasn't worked with them before. It's hard to go off of somebody else's word, but when you worked with a person, you kind of know. Um, but that takes time to, to build up. Um, so it, it depends. A freelance, it's hard. 
is a very cutthroat field for sure. Okay, so I'm going to go down to my neck and I'm just going to add a little bit of these highlights to lead the eye up. Crisscross. So I have a little bit of some detail. I'm doing it to where like the, the skin might have been hit, so I have some highlights from the skin damage or wounds. Okay, and I'm going to highlight some of these details to separate because this belongs to the outer skin, not the inner skin. Reputation is key, big time. Once you actually, um, once you get a client, you make sure you bust your butt and you try to do it and, uh, you know, that's the biggest thing. No excuses. Uh, let me see. Uh, off topic, do you retop it in brush or mix? Uh, but I, I, Z brush. Okay. All right. Thank you, Pine Fox. I appreciate it. What are the main things should maintain a character to win character competitions? Hey, man, that's hard. <laughs> um,. Because again, it's on depends on how the competition. It's it's based on, yeah, skill of course. But you're gonna have, you know, it's, it's whoever looking at it. You know what I mean? You have to know your, um, who's gonna be viewing it. And I mean, that's look. I believe realism is is fantastic. I believe it's you know, the hardest thing to do. Um, but you have people who think you know, abstract art is better. I have a tendency to disagree, I, but that's, you know, but if I have a client that says abstract art is key and they're going to pay me for abstract art, I'm doing abstract art. I'm just going to slop some paint on a canvas and add some psychology to it. That's how I kind of look at it. Um, but it's, uh, know your, know your field or you're hitting towards. So just like if you guys are going for a job interview, make sure you know where you're going, what they've done. And you show some respect, and you kind of make sure that you, uh, you know, don't walk in there and go, oh, what do you guys do? You should know, you know. I think that's a problem with, uh, um, it's not easy. And the, honestly, the, a lot of the new students and, and people I've seen is they don't do their homework, and they think uh, it should just be handed to them on a plate. Um, and, and, you know, it's just... If I want a if I want a pizza, I got to call for it. They're not just going to show up at the door just because I thought about it. So it's like I really like a pepperoni pizza. Why the hell is it not here? You got to call. So yeah, poly paint is is awesome. Hey, how's it going, RD Multimedia? Thanks for showing up, man. And Nala, yeah, it's uh, it all depends on your. Sp I mean, every everything that kind of you know goes into it when you're doing freelance and work. Okay. So I think I am getting close. I like some of these forms I have going into it. I just did that extra sweep. It's almost kind of like he's got whiskers or whatever. So I'm going to highlight. I've got a lot of the light in here. So I'm going to kind of bring some of, and if you notice, my attention is directly in the middle of the face. I need to kind of blend out a little bit. Since I have like this highlight here, I'm going to, remember that X that I was talking about? I need to lead the eye out a little bit. So I'm going to kind of, start to highlight some of this to start leading my eye around the sculpt. Almost kind of give it like a little bone-esque feel to it. Glad to hear it, man. And pick this up here and then pick that highlight up just a little bit more. And I, I don't have to keep it constant. I can kind of ebb and flow. So that's sort of what I'm doing. And then I'm going to kind of pick it up just here on the side. And I'm going to do a couple like little stripes. Okay. So I think that helps a little bit. Let's do a couple more visual hits here. And I'm detailing a little bit of highlights around certain areas to kind of 
blend your eye in. Okay. Now let's go a little bit darker. And what I'm doing is I'm just blending. That got a little bit too high, so I'm knocking that back. And I need to... I'm going to probably go into a little bit of the blues value because I want to cool this down just a little. in that blue color so I'm switching back and forth guys between the different sub tools I think I just need to make that lip a little bit more purple thank you Anthony I appreciate it buddy um, I appreciate, uh, let me say, I prefer poly paint over substance painter. I'm getting used to substance painter. Um, but I mean, for high poly painting, yeah, as subs, I mean, I just, I like this a lot better. Um, to be quite honest, it's just a lot more fun for me. Um, because that's, you know, and I, I have a lot more control over top. I'm painting, I'm not kind of moving a couple of dials around and getting, you know, some pretty cool effects, which is great. It's just more of my inexperience with it. I've, I've used it and I'm, I can do it. Um, I just, it seems a lot better to, for me for hard surface, um, which is kind of, you know, metals and materials and all kind of stuff. It really kind of helps with some of those. Okay, I'm going to knock this into place by giving some shadow. So there's not like a big separation. And I'm going to bring this up a little bit more. Okay. So. Bringing the colors underneath. I haven't really been paying attention to the jaw. Some of the colors. Let's go ahead and connect those by doing the color. I mean, you can keep finding stuff and you can keep going, oh, I gotta fix this and that, but um, I'm getting close. Okay. Because I'm kind of treating this like, it's almost like the skin is exposed. It's very much towards like the, the red drum. Now, if I want to bring in some kind of red, I'm gonna kind of warm it up. I'm just doing a very subtle, I'm gonna go back to getting myself an alpha. To break it up I was doing I had a lot of um, flat tones in there I want to kind of intermix some of my color and then I'm going to pull that into some of my areas sort of like that the transparency we were talking about before I want to kind of make it look like there's a little bit more bubbles or something underneath that's kind of a little transparent like it's closer to the skin And then pull some of that highlighted red into this little area because it was looking a little too green. Okay. I'm just trying to push that back. I want that right in there, but I don't want it as... So I'm using the colors surrounding this, guys, just to kind of knock back certain extra areas and then I'm kind of highlighting certain areas, bringing in some colors. So I'm just popping around the colors that I've created on my character to tie it all together, okay? So right now I'm sweeping in with that purple and I'm just kind of blending. Okay. 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and add some, maybe some detail, some I should have saved this, but let me go ahead and save as Well, uh, the if I talk, I you definitely do. Uh, like he's asking about like uh, characters that are over detailed. You need to have balance. You need to have areas of, of rest. So if I have tons of details around here, I need to kind of make sure that I'm kind of resting the eye a little bit. So I might blend out that just a little bit to kind of focus your eye on that, and your eyes resting, and then I have some detail that picks it up and follows the line. So you have to. Anytime you see something where it's just entirely tertiary details everywhere, it's sort of like when I go shopping for food and there's so much, my eyes get headaches because there's just so much crap hitting me. You need to have areas of balance. You need to definitely lead the eye where you want it to go and you need it to give it a rest to kind of let it, you know, pick up some of the, what you want it to see and then kind of go, okay, this, no, go there. You know, that's that's what the, that's what the level of rest is for, is to kind of, um, help you find other areas of interest. That's very much just like I was talking about Rembrandt where you cut off the arm, it leads your eye around. Same thing with with this. So, um, okay, I'm picking up a few highlights. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, if I had a low poly and UVs and stuff like that, I could make... I mean, if you guys want me to, to show you some more game stuff that I can show you, I mean, down the line at the next one, I can probably pull that in and kind of take it to the final guy. It's a key shot or whatever. I'm trying to stay in the ZBrush. Um, I do create low polys from DynaMesh, um, decimating a mesh and kind of getting some of the details. I do do that um, in my own work uh, for my low polys. Um, so I can... Possibly. That's usually what I do teaching a class, and I probably will be teaching a class here pretty soon, too. Because I've had a lot of kids, or a lot of students ask me about that. I shouldn't say kids. Um, would this sort of polypaint process be a strong color base for a substance to work on? Yes, in infinity. Infinite. You could bring this in as your base and build on your details on top of it. I've done that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it depends on your engine on the darks. You can always lighten those up or just, you know, take your albedo and just kind of play with the, the colors. If you need to lighten it up because you don't want to... I mean, I'm I'm burning in shadows, guys, um, just because that's, you know, I'm kind of doing it for a nice render. Um, but you don't, you know, when you do something for substance or anything like that, you don't want to burn in your albedo. You don't want to... You want to let the light in whatever engine environment you're going into let you give that light in detail okay so now that i have this pretty much done i'm going to go back to my alphas and i'm going to kind of bring in some of that extra detail I usually on here to tie this in i'm going to pick that color and i'm going to pick a pretty high color and i'm going to not do that i'm going to use this to blend in just a little bit and what i'm doing is i'm using the skin detail from the elephant to kind of just sort of highlight a little bit more of my areas and then blend. So if you can see, see some of that skin kind of come into the blend, um, just a little bit, especially around the neck. I might want to pick up just that color tone. Yeah, you could definitely use this as your. I mean, I, that's what I usually do. I, I like to get this because the poly paint is a lot, a quick way to get a lot of the base in your direction that you want to go. So this is where, like, if I, I want to bring in some color, I can quickly use that elephant skin that would dilute it to test it out. So you see how by bringing in that color just lightens it a little bit. It's just gonna so you can actually go over top of you know by doing that wash I tied that all in together so I might do that again and so what this does is just allows me to warm up that 
tone with that here. So now I'm blending. So now that feels a little bit more tied in by doing that alpha. If I want to do something really stark or crazy, like stripes or whatever, uh, let me go ahead and alphas. And I've done this a couple of times where, you know, I was grabbing in um, scratches and marks from environment alphas that I have. So I have a picture folder that is like, I don't know, two terabytes. I mean, it's huge. It's just, it's got a lot of stuff. And then, so I, I've built up over the years of all my sections and stuff. So it's just like all these just within my picture folders. And then I'll go through and I'll have my alphas. Um, so here within my alpha, you can actually see I'll have like the breakdown of all these different different things. And you can go into like environment alpha and then look for different things that will kind of, um, you know, it doesn't have to be, this belongs to an animal. I was bringing in cracks, like I'm looking at custom cracks right now, um, bolts. I mean, you, you never know until you try um, what you actually might find. So I've used um, this these scratches these are you can make your own alphas as well too but it's like if you you never um just because these like look pretty stark i've used them for other episodes it doesn't mean i can't use them now i can quickly just test them out you know because i might just use these in a different way where i have a little bit of my warmth to come into and i might just use them as just like a little bit of cracks on the uh, on the alien i actually had them for more of the design but i might actually use these for looking like I have a little bit of cracks from like the skin is kind of breaking up um, you know like it's been he's been damaged or whatever I, I can I can change the way that the alpha is I'm in control of how they work um, and just because I've used it for one particular character in a certain way does not mean that I have to continue with that so So if I'm adding just a little bit of that break up of the detail, this will look entirely different than what I actually had before. Now, if I hold down uh, Alt, I get a black. I take out the color entirely and I just do the, the, the black. Um, I actually like the way that flipped. It flips the alpha as well, too. It's, uh, so let me go ahead and turn my alpha. And if it doesn't look right, undo it. If it's not working, take it out. Like I, I don't know if I'm liking that. So, or maybe I might just. Pull in just a little bit and then I can take that out. Um, At the end, you use the three-point light for presentation. Um, yes, um, just like a general setup, warm, cool, the, the pin light. Um, do not go extreme, guys. And you're like I've seen people use like 16 colored lights and all kind of crap. It doesn't work because a lot of people want to like use it to hide um, how bad the model is. Um, they know so. Um, Try to just make a good model and then just light it nicely. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit. These are like cheetah spots. They don't feel right. I like the fact that I, I have some uh, definition to the hood. So I just need to find that right alpha. Um, and this is where I should really start looking for crazy alphas and just keep building them up. Uh, I have a tendency I haven't been doing that lately as much as I should. Especially now that I'm kind of doing this more. Yeah, the alpha makes a big difference when you when you change and you're playing. It's just a quick way to get some ideas down. So, um, 
you just got to kind of try a couple different things. Um, maybe I go back to a pour. So I'm grabbing like the pours to kind of, and I'm going to bring these up a little bit. Because I want to kind of make it a little bit more splotchy. I'm tying in those colors. I'm breaking up the skin. Kind of adding a little bit of that extra detail. And this is where, you know, just try it. See how it works. Because, I mean, I'm just, it's just paint. I can just take it right back off pretty quickly. And right here, same thing. I want to kind of maybe add just a little bit of splotch. Or go back to maybe the scratches kind of work in here. I don't know. I'm just playing, guys. Whatever works. That's what, you know, just try it. If it doesn't look right to you, that's all that matters. If it looks right to you, that's all that matters. All right, so that's working fairly well. I'm going to come back down here, and I'm going to add a little bit of variation using these to kind of crisscross the alphas. Maybe not too extreme. Maybe just on some of the edges. And then I'm going to blend in a little bit darker. And I'm breaking up the skin. Okay. I'll find a different alpha. <laughs> I'll, I'll look for more alphas and stuff like that. And of course, if you guys come across some cool stuff, I mean, it's just like, it, um, you know, just make sure you save it and you start building up that library. Okay. So there, I use that alpha for the eyeball. I mean, who's to say that I have to have a straight eye? I mean, I, I could just sit there and have this be this funky eye or a crisscross. I mean, it's it's a creature. I can make it whatever I want it to be. So, um, looks kind of weird. Again, whichever, whatever you want it to be. Maybe I just want it just a little bit knocked back so it's just subtly there. Um, all right, so I've done this before. I'm going to just uh, quickly save this. I'm going to um, do a quick pose for people because I, I've I usually said they wanted to. If, if I'm done with this presentation, I want to pose just a little bit. If it's bland and it's in a, in a T pose, A pose, whatever, it's just very bland. Uh, if you're trying to showcase this to someone, um, you can just quickly go ahead and go to your T-Pose, Transpose Master. I've broken down most of these things into the different levels, which is what comes in handy as well to do T-Pose mess. mesh. It's going to go through my whole subtools. It's going to break it down and say, good, you're done. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my lasso, and I'm just going to grab the bottom half of my neck, and I'm going to just hold down Alt. I'm sorry, Control. Yeah, Control. And I'm going to blend it out. If you see right there, it's just kind of blending, and what it's doing is actually... If, you, if I held down Alt, it would go to a sharp. It would be pretty much a harsh sharp between the, the two. Um, that'd be good. Yeah, I'll, uh, Cesar, uh, whatever, Cesaro, um, I will do it. Um, and you got it. No one's typing in the background. Sorry, guys. Um, sorry if it was noisy. It was me on the keyboard. I was typing. I was moving stuff around. Um, absolutely, Nova. Have a good one. Um, so once I have that posed... Um, I want to have the neck turn slightly, so I'm going to go ahead and grab to my move tool. 
I'm going to bring it down to where the neck is going to be. Sort of like think of the spine through the character. I'm going to turn off my um, symmetry and then I'm going to go ahead and just slightly turn. And usually I just always turn and look up or whatever. You don't, you, um, I'm going to hold down control to switch it and I'm going to then, oops. get off my move tool and I'm going to blend go back to my move tool and what I'm doing is I'm just slowly taking this and turning it you could also rotate and move you can do quite a bit like if you're going to have it launching forward up and over like he's really like what's up you know you careful on your on how much you move it I mean I can make it pretty extreme like that I don't know if I like that um, and I can even kind of go with this and make it, you know, I can do quite a different stuff. Whatever you do and you're moving in your transpose, it's going to equate it to whatever you do on your character. So I just want to make it a little bit turn to the side. So when it's looking here, it's just looking to the side. And once you're happy with whatever your pose is going to be, you can just go quickly to T-Pose to Subtools. going to go through all the subtools, update them, move them pop it done okay so what that does is it just allows me to have like a little bit of a life of life or whatever it's just kind of it's good so oh same. hey what's going on ash welcome thanks for showing up another great zbrush artist has joined us aq check her out um so it's this, by doing just like a little bit of motion, it just takes it from being stale. It brings it to kind of like, oh, okay, it has some life to it. And it took me five seconds. So you, and you can try a couple different ones. Just make sure that whenever you save, save as, don't save it over top of the new one. Just add, you know, posed past it or, or separate it as a separate file because, um, when you reopen it, I'm going to lose all that symmetry that I was working on. So if I wanted to go back, I could sit there and um, uh, do it. Oh, thanks, Ash. Appreciate it. Yeah, I was trying to think of the two different colors and um, like a little bit of snake-esque feel to it. So, but but once you have that pose, guys, then, you know, uh, oh, somebody asked about rendering. Uh, I, I do a lot of rendering in the key shot. Um, to stick it into here, though, um, let's just go ahead into... Um, like you go to external rendering and turn on to key shut if you want to do that. Um, render properties, uh, you can change some of your, you can get a wax preview, SS, you could do a couple of those different things in here. Um, my shadow, I usually turn down my shadow strength and my rays, you can turn up just a little bit. Um, image inclusion, same thing. And then, you know, when you however you're going to pose it and you just hit the BPR, it's going to go through the passes and whatever passes you set up. It's just great if you just want to kind of give a little bit extra to it. As you see right there, the shadow is pretty, pretty highlighted. Uh, I mean, not as down. I, I want the shadow to come down. So let's go ahead and do the shadow. Um, let me see. What is it? The Let's try a different angle. Let's try 34. Okay, so I reduced it and I took out that one. So the the let's see opposite. So let's try a negative fifty or zero angle. And like I said, I haven't used the rendering in a while, but as you see right there, it's kind of picking up some of the chin. So my light is coming from above here. Um, so you can kind of play with however that's going to be. Um, in KeyShot, if you do send this over to KeyShot. Um, with the poly paint, just make sure whatever material you add, you just hold down Alt and it will keep all your poly, poly paint information, which is phenomenal. So that way I can add more translucency to the, the ear sacks or whatever the hell they are, um, or make the skin a little bit rougher. You can play a whole bunch of different things. So, Thanks, Ash. Yeah, you know, that's what we're trying to have me do the low poly. And I mean, honestly, it's like uh, I tell you what, in the day I don't have to pick up my little one. I, I will go through and I'll do a, a start to finish from in-game asset. Um, but, uh, you know, to kind of go through, because I mean, I could actually pick this up too. Um, I was using the scan data heads to kind of give myself some new creatures and some ideas and to show you guys. So, 
Yeah, but retopoing is, is not too much fun. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of people. A lot of people want to sit there and do it. They want to learn how to make games, kind of stuff, and that's what you know. Um, that's where I usually do my classes, to where I I take you all the way through the high poly to the final game in assets, uh, assets again and again and again. So, um, but I mean, this is more where it's kind of creature. And I know a lot of people actually do a lot of creature stuff. So maybe you know, just go ahead and write to me and let me know some of the things you guys want me to touch for the streams. I know we got Brendan, we got Ash, we got other people that could do the creature stuff as well. So I could step into more of a game asset thing and kind of show you my years. I mean, I've been doing it for about 20 years. So um, I know all the tricks and stuff <laughs> to kind of do it. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty harsh on the polys, on the UVs and everything else to make sure it's good. And uh, you guys are coming at a great time where you just click buttons and stuff. And, you know, I'm starting to show my age, but it's very frustrating. So, but... Uh, Okay, guys, if there's no more questions, I think I might have to go get the little guy. But that's pretty much what. And then uh, control S to snapshot on the stream. So I'm glad you guys, are, you know, right angle. I'm glad you're enjoying it. And just, uh, you know, I'm more than happy to help. Like I said, we're all here for you guys. Um, ZBrush is a very in-depth program, uh, and like I said, I barely touch a lot of the details into it because I want to make it easy for somebody joining or for just a pro to kind of come in and just relax. Um, it's too, you know, like I said, as an artist, you don't have to, tech should be a known habit. Um, or I've done demos where I was in front of, uh, in, for Massive Black in London, it was in front of 1,500 people in ZBrush. I was having trouble. Uh, it wasn't quite working for me, but my habit of just my hand motions were just continually going while I just BS'd until it kind of came into it. Um, I just, you want it to be where it's like a secondary thing, you don't even think about it. The creative sculpting thinking is where you just want to have fun and um, having fun is part of the game. So if you're, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong, to be quite honest. So yeah, uh, Brandon and Ash, I'll have to drop into more of you guys' stuff I, I keep uh, meaning to, and but I just don't want to be bothered. So. <laughs> yeah, and no worries, Ash. I appreciate the time you just dropping in. So, keep telling people keep telling me I have to fill your shoes. And so maybe I just might do that game stuff. So I'm kind of in my own shoes. So, full body creature next time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll take it. I have I have creatures that I kind of do as well, and maybe I just might do more of a long pattern because this is my tenth episode. So maybe I might take it from, you know, start to finish creature design all the way through to final and game rendering assets and stuff. So. Thank you, Death Cultural. I appreciate it. Totally appreciate you guys taking the time to stop in. So have a great weekend. All right, and I'll see you guys next Friday from 1 to 3 Central Time. And uh, hopefully, you, you know, drop me a line anytime at uh, bbriley at bbriley.com or through my websites, all that kind of stuff. Um, just let me know if you have any questions, and please, uh, please say hi. All right, thanks, guys. Have a great one. Take care.